What's up guys, it's Marcus from Perspective Sports and as you know, Chris Paul has been traded from the Los Angeles Clippers to the Houston Rockets. Now, not only leaving the Clippers without a starting caliber point guard, not only leaving them without a leader, but now the Clippers don't have a face. Chris Paul was the Los Angeles Clippers. But now that he and the Clippers have parted ways, it's time for the Clippers to go into a full-blown rebuild. And in order to begin that rebuild, they must make three moves, and they might be obvious, but it's the execution that makes them work. And the first step to a proper rebuild is to trade Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin is a very good player. He's, you can make the case that he's the best power forward in the league, and he's certainly one of the most exciting players in the league. But in order for the Clippers to properly rebuild, they must get rid of him. And a team that comes to mind as a good fit is the Oklahoma City Thunder. And it's too late to do what they did with Chris Paul, get him to opt back in so they can trade him. So now they must orchestrate a signing trade with Blake Griffin because the Thunder can't afford to sign him in free agency. So a signing trade would be the perfect, perfect idea for both teams. The Thunder have been rumored to really want Blake Griffin, and he's been interested in playing with them. Remember, he played college at the New Oklahoma University, and he seems to be enamored with the idea of playing with Russell Westbrook. That team will be very exciting to watch, and I drew up a trade that can work for both teams. The Thunder get Blake Griffin. The Clippers get a 2019 Thunder's first-round pick unprotected. 2020 Thunder first-round pick top 10 protected, or they get the 2021 unprotected. They get center Enos Cantor and power forward Domitas Sabonis. This is a fair trade for both sides. The Thunder get an all-star caliber player in Blake Griffin and another star to play alongside Russell Westbrook. For the Clippers, you don't want to take on any bad contracts when you're rebuilding, so you avoid the Victor Oladipo contract which owes him $84 million over the next four years, and take Domitas Sabonis, who is young, average six points a game, four rebounds, shot 40% from the field in about 20 minutes. That's not bad for a rookie with a ball-dominant point guard like Russell Westbrook. He also can play the modern-day game, knocking down threes. He's thought of as a stretch four. You get a couple of picks, and Enos Cantor, whose main role is to fill up the cap in this trade to make it work, but he's also a solid piece for a team like the Clippers, and he can even be traded if they decide to go in that direction. The next step is to trade DeAndre Jordan, and this is going to be one of the more challenging things to do, and it's kind of sad because DeAndre was actually about to leave the Clippers a couple years ago in free agency to join the Dallas Mavericks when he was at the peak of his value, but instead, after being held hostage essentially, decided to re-sign with the Clippers, but now it's going to be hard to get as much as you could have got for him a couple of years ago because he doesn't fit the modern day NBA. He can't shoot threes, he doesn't have a mid-range, he can't even hit free throws, which means he can't be on the floor in closing minutes. And so they'll have to juice the trade up in order to get the deal done. But after looking around, I saw a potential trade partner in the Phoenix Suns. And here's how the deal would look. The Suns would get DeAndre Jordan, Austin Rivers, a 2021 Clippers first round pick, lottery protected through 2022. Or they'll get the 2023 unprotected first round. The Clippers get center Tyson Chandler, point guard Brad Knight, and the 2018 Raptors second round via Phoenix. This deal works for the Suns because they get Jordan, who can be a great mentor for players like Alex Lynn and Marquise Chris, while at the same time being a quality player. He is an excellent rebounder as he averaged 14 rebounds last season a game. And the Clippers benefit because they get Austin Rivers' contract off the books. We all know Austin Rivers wasn't worth what his father gave him, Doc Rivers. And to flip a player like Austin Rivers for Brandon Knight, who is not only a solid production player, but can maintain good trade value, is a steal. They also get Tyson Chandler, whose contract will expire in two years, but the Clippers are likely just to buy him out to get him off the books. And the third and final thing is to fire Doc Rivers. The Clippers must move on from the Doc Rivers heir, and it's nothing against Doc Rivers, but Doc Rivers, the GM, has been terrible, and Doc Rivers, the coach, has suffered because of it. The Clippers need a fresh start, hence why they moved on from the big three, so they need to bring in fresh faces who can help grow and mature with a young core and help them in future years. And I don't think Doc Rivers is willing to go through a rebuild, hence why he left Boston. So he definitely won't want to go through another rebuild with the Clippers. So after all the trades that we've made and all the moves, it's time to review our assets. And after all the trades, the Clippers have now cleared a little over $22.6 million in cap space over the next two seasons. They've attained valuable players, and by value I mean trade value, and Enos Cantor. They kept held on to Jamal Crawford. 
Domitas Sabonis, whose number will increase because he does play for a bad team. Brandon Knight. And now they have six first rounds in the next three years. There's an asterisk next to the 2019-2020 because of the deal that got Doc Rivers to Boston, I believe it was. Had a lottery protective pick. And after 2020, I think it just goes to a second round pick that the Celtics will get. And so we'll treat it as if they have six first rounds in the next three years. So I think the Clippers will be in pretty great shape after all these moves. Well, I thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you next time.